Hey, Audacious Church, God bless you and welcome to our devotionals. I know that I speak for myself and the a lot of our teams at Church Family say thank you for being uh, consistent and committed to a life of devotion. Uh, it is with great pleasure that you know we do these de- devotions and we love seeing people commenting and messaging and saying, wow, this word is so poignant, it was brilliant for this time and all of these good things. So without further ado, I want to get going. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rafaram. I'm the young adult and the small groups pastor for our church in Manchester, based in our central location. Uh, and it is a pre- pleasure that I have to continue in our relationship series, as we have been doing throughout the week. I'm going to also draw from uh, David and Saul's relationship, and I'm going to be particularly talking about our relationship with our leaders and in that context. And I kind of want to start off by asking a question. Um, I don't know if you've ever had an, an awful boss, somebody who no matter what your performance is like at work, they just seem to have it out for you. You just never seem to be on side with them. Or perhaps it's it's a leader within the church who you look at and you're like, they're not doing a good job. Like you, you just look at, look at everything they do and they're constantly missing the mark. They just, they're just not doing what you believe a leader should be doing. Um, and I want to ask you a bit more on this. What, what's been your response previously? Is your response maybe to, to gossip? To speak to other people within your workplace, within the congregation, within your neighborhood and be like, oh, if that was me, I would have done it differently. I would have done X and I would have done Y and I would have done this and I would have done that. Or maybe your response is, you know, I'm just going to ignore it and hope it just gets better. You know, I'm just going to sweep it under the carpet and, you know, somebody else more important than me or has more authority than me or whatever, we'll, we'll figure that out. Or, or maybe you're actually not, I'm going to be direct. I'm going to go straight to them and let you know what, this is what you should do. This is the plan and this is how we can do it. You're a terrible leader. And you're just confronting them directly. Well, the scripture actually offers an answer for this. It says we should pray for our leaders. And I want to urge you, are you praying, ask you, sorry, are you praying for your leaders? 1 Timothy 2, uh, verses 1 to 2 says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all people who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked with godliness and dignity. Wow, that, that's, that's today's key verse. And I think it's, it's not just asking us to pray for our leaders, but it's actually saying, hey, intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them give thanks for the people who are causing you frustration how crazy is that it's it's not the most intuitive thing and i know that in in my own experience in working um where my my boss hasn't been you know taking a particular liking to me or i'm disagreeing with a lot of the decisions that they're making and i feel like they're either not focusing on the things that we should be focusing on my first response is not to pray for them what hasn't historically and it's not the most intuitive thing, but I think we can we can draw lessons from scripture that actually we should pray for them. We should pray for them. And I can acknowledge that, you know, because of the leadership dynamic and relationship, there are there's almost a, a distance between us and leader. And we, we sometimes stop seeing them as, as an individual and rather as the position. Or you see them as the decision maker, the no fun police or the uh, just just the, the result of all the bad things in, in the workplace or in your church, for example. And we, we not dehumanize, but we, we detach the humanness of them from their position. And, and I think this is where scripture says, hey, you know, let's, let's remain compassionate. Let's remember um, that these are our brothers and sisters, sisters in Christ. So we, we have been looking at relationship dynamics, of course, and David and Saul had a similar experience. Um, I encourage you to read 1 Samuel 23 and 24 to give you kind of a bit of a broader context. But we're going to jump into uh, 1 Samuel 24 verse 6 in a second. And really here we find uh, Saul, King Saul, has been in relentless pursuit of, of David. He's, he's out with his men to try and kill him and snuff him out. And, you know, Saul is David's, you know, godfather, sorry, um, line manager, he's the king and his father-in-law. And really, uh, there's, there's a situation that occurs when David is in a cave 
And Saul comes into that cave to relieve himself, the Bible says. And David has the opportunity to strike him down there to kill him and rid himself of all his problems. He is potentially justified and is even encouraged by some of his um, band of brothers, some of his, some of his men are there say, hey, this is your opportunity. Surely God has delivered this person to you. We don't have time to get into that today, but hey, not every voice should be listened to. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, but what, what, what David responds, I think, is really what I want us to get to here. And he says uh, in, in verse 24, so chapter 24, verse 6, the Lord, forbid, the Lord forbid that I should do this to my Lord, the King. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one. The Lord himself has chosen him. David is reminding us that God has positioned all leaders in our lives. Be it leaders in the workplace, leaders in government, leaders in our church. All of these positions have been God appointed. The Bible does say that God appoints leaders. So our job as, as people under authority is to pray for our leaders. And, and Timothy is encouraging us even further than praying for our leaders. Let's intercede for them. Let's intercede in their marriages. Let's intercede for their children, for their health, for their well-being. Let's intercede for, for the positions that they have and the pressures of those positions. But also let's just give thanks for their lives. And that's where I want to land today, guys. Let's give thanks for our leaders and let's pray for them. So I, I encourage you to, to pray for the leaders in your workspace. So your CEO, your line managers, your CEOs. Pray for the leaders in our government. Pray for your local MP. Pray for the members of parliament. Pray pray for Mr. Johnson himself, the prime minister. And finally, pray for the church. Pray for your small group leader. Pray for your campus pastor. Pray for pastors Glenn and Self, especially as they're on sabbatical right now. I think we should be a church that honors and prays for our leaders. And as the Bible says, that God will deal with them as he does. So Heavenly Father, God, I want to thank you for this time that I've had this morning with your church. Thank you for the leaders who you've appointed in our, in our workspaces, in our government, and in our churches. Thank you that you have appointed them for a reason and there is something in them. So God, we commit ourselves as a church to pray for them, to pray for them, to intercede on their behalf, to cover them with grace and love and prayer for the positions of authority that they hold. I pray for wisdom in the decisions that they make. I pray for strategy and God vision for the directions in which they, they take us as, as a congregation and as a community. Lord, we thank you for those who you've entrusted to us. And we, we trust you, Lord, and we cover them in your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining me today, church. I pray that you have had or will have a, a blessed and phenomenal day. God bless you.